class, we're going to work on protostomes now. Hi guys, we're here to uh, support Bella and she's going to give you her uh, give you her speech right now. Okay, you got it, Bella. Okay, so our first phylum that we're going to work on is mo mollusca. And mollusks have three main body parts, the first of which is um, a muscular foot, and they use this for movement. And also, they also have a mantle cavity which contains their gills, anus, and excretory pores. Um, the radula is used to scrape up algae and other food particles from the sand. And most mollusks have separate sexes, but many snails, which are mollusks, are hermaphrodites. And so the, for the first class we're gonna do is polyphacophoria, which are chitons. And chitons have eight dorsal plates on an unsegmented body. And they have extremely, like, really strong grip, which they can hold on to and move with their muscular foot. And they use their radula to scrape up algae for food. And the next class, the really important class, is snails and slugs. And they're called gastropods. And they're mostly marine, and some are freshwater, and some are land-dwelling. So they're really adapted to different habitats. And during their embryonic development, there's a process called torsion. And torsion is basically a part of snails and slugs where one side grows faster than the other. And this pushes like the anus and uh, the digestive tract near the mouth. So it's easy for the snails to digest their food and like spit it out and then eat and things like that. And these are, these are characterized by gastropods. Um, most gastropods have shells which they use to retreat in. And slugs are just the only example of gastropods that do not need snails. And most of these shells are spiraled and they will retreat in these if they're threatened. Um, also, um, they use their radula to scrape up food particles from the ground. And also, they some of them are predators and they have like poison darts which they shoot out. And some of them have a vascular lining in their mantle cavity which is used to exchange respiratory gases with the air. Um, the next class we're going to talk about is bivalves, and bivalves include clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops. And the shells in bivalves are divided into in two valves, which are, that's why they're called bivalves. And they're hinged at the mid dorsal line, so they're like clams when they go like this, and they flap in and out. And they're held tightly together through adductor muscles, which are really strong, which help protect the mollusks from like predators. And they're also suspension and filter feeders, which means that they like filter in food particles from the water and then they take them in the nutrients. They don't have a radula and no distinct head and they just stay in their shells mostly and wait for food particles to come by and they suck them in. And usually they move about by using their muscular foot or they can also you flap their shells and create a current and they'll float along that current. Um, the last class of mollusks is cephalopods which are squid, octopus, and cuttlefish. And they can move really fast to catch prey and they have beak-like jaws, which they use to bite their prey, and they can inject them with poisons to immobilize them so they can eat them faster. Squids, um, unlike octopi, they swim backwards through like jet propulsion, like this. So through the water, and they push it in and out. It's called the excurrent siphon. And they have 10 polymorphic tentacles, but mostly they have, like in general, they have eight, and two of them are specialized for like grabbing things while octopi have eight tentacles and they're not specialized, they're all symmetric and they just crawl about the ocean floor. Um, they are also monogamous, which is really surprising compared to all the other species. They're like one of the few that are monogamous and they are only mate with only one other mate. Um, cephalopods are also the only mollusks that have a closed circulatory system, which is blood containing vessels, not like just randomly throughout the body. And they also have a complex brain, nervous system, and senses, which that's the reason why a lot of scientists call them intelligent. And they're also able to adapt to their surroundings and sudden events really quickly. And that's why like octopi and squid are able to like camouflage themselves in the water. And the only shelled cephalopod left is the chambered nautilus. Okay, so um, another phylum we're going to talk about is phylum Anthropoda. And these are seg segmented collimates with exoskeletons and jointed appendages, such as crabs or lobster. And anthropods are considered to be the most successful phylums in like in, gen in invertebrates because they have been able to live in the water and the land, as opposed to like just say mollusks, they only can live in the water. Um, there are different kinds of extinct 
anthropods, but we're not going to go into those because they're not that important right now. Um, important class is um, sea spiders and horseshoe crabs, and these have specialized appendages which have been modified into fangs for hunting and eating. Um, there's also a class Arachnida, which includes scorpions, spiders, ticks, and mites, and they have six pairs of appendages which are attached to their cephalothorax, and also Calicurae, which poison glands to help capture and poison and mobilize the prey. They also have two pedipalps, which fun function in the feeding and senses of their prey, to sense their prey, and they also have four pairs of walking legs, which means eight, like spiders. They also have book lungs to carry out respiration, which are protected within their internal chamber, and they can also catch fly insects through their spinnerets. Um, insects are not a class of um, anthropods. They're like their own phylum. Like, no, they're on their own class. And class Diplopoda, or millipedes, are worm-like creatures with a large number of walking legs, and they have a thousand legs, as opposed to the class Cichilopoda, which are centipedes, and they only have a hundred legs. And they feed on decaying food matter, as opposed to hunting for them. Some centipedes or millipedes will hunt for um, prey, but that doesn't happen very often. Class Insecta can be found in almost every habitat in the world. Many have wings, and they are probably evolved to help like absorb heat or glide away or from predators. They also have an open circulatory system, not like mollusks. Um, they also their excretory organs, such as the malpighian tubules, are the outpocketings of the gut and they help remove metabolic wastes. Tra the tracheal system helps the body carry oxygen to the cells through branched tr tubes lined with chitin, and this opens to the outside through spiracles or pores that help open up the and close to maintain the airflow and respiratory gas exchange. Also, some of them in, um, undergo incomplete metamorphosis through molting their, of their skin, or, or some of them go through complete more metamorphosis, such as a caterpillar, which will go through the cocoon stage and then become a butterfly eventually. And they usually um, sexually reprodu reproduce through internal fertilization, which creates eggs and they lay those, or they're hermaphrodites, which they also create eggs and then lay them. And the last class will be class crustacea, which includes shrimps, lobsters, and crabs, and crayfish. And these are the only arthropods with two pairs of antenna, anthropods, sorry, and other appendages are used as mouth parts or are called um, mandibles. And small crustaceans respirate through thinner spots on their cuticle. Larger crustaceans have gills. So like basically their cuticle will just have like thinner spots and they'll breathe through those. Um, they also have open circulatory systems and their heart pumps hemo hemolymph through their arteries. There are sex separate sexes in each crustacean so they're not hermaphrodites. And their isopods, isopods are small marine ant crustaceans, and they're the same thing as so bugs and pill bugs. Cephalopods are the most plentiful of all crustaceans, and they can be found in both marine and freshwater habitats, and they're also known as plankton. And barnacles are sessile crustaceans, which means that they stay in the same spot. They're attached to a substratum with hardened calcium carbonate shells, and they, they are suspension feeders, which means, like as I told you about bivalves, they feed through having food particles come to them and they filter out the water and eat them. Okay, and then now we're gonna move on to deuterostomes. And the major um, phylum of deuterostomes is echinodermata. The other phylum we'll not go into because that those are vertebrates in, in the phylum chordata. But um, echinoderms have a water vascular system and a radio anatomy and they include the class Asteroida, which are starfish and sea stars, or sea stars, same thing. They can adapt to dangerous surroundings through hypersensitive senses, so they have really strong senses of smell, touch, and taste, and they move through a hydraulic muscle system, which creates a powerful adhesion to rocks for starfish to move safely, and they can also regenerate really quickly, so if you cough off a leg of a starfish, it will grow back but the body can't grow back, it's just another leg will grow back. Um, the class Ophutera, or brittle stars, are different from sea stars in that they move about with a lashing of their legs instead of two feet, which starfish have to suck on and like release through rocks. Um, class of sea urchins and sand dollars 
They have a spine-like organ, which is used as a cleaning mechanism, as well as a defense mechanism, holding the potential to secrete powerful toxins to um, make predator predators um, go away. They also don't have arms. They use their long spines to move about, and they reproduce by releasing gametes into the seawater, which develops later into bilateral larvae. The class of sea lilies is relatively new, and there's not that much information known about them, except they can live by attaching themselves to a substratum, substratum and crawl through their pliably long arms when directed upward. So they kind of look like sea anemones, and they crawl or feed themselves through their long flexible arms. So like, they're, they can attach themselves to a substratum, but they're able to move as well. And the last class is sea cucumbers, holothuriota, and they lack spines, and they kind of look like worms mixed with vegetables. And they have a soft endoskeleton and five rows of two feet because they have pentomeral symmetry, which they use to move and feed themselves. And that's protosomes. Good job, Bella. Okay, see you guys in class. Bye-bye. Got it.